Now we have the miracle methods which will give you pointed direction to your dynamic desire to gain recognition as a salesman. You know that you have an impelling desire to sell. You know that desire is a powerful force which leads you to positive thought and therefore to action. You've already begun action, this very action that you're performing now at this moment, the constructive action of building a foundation for a more successful career, this powerful action of discovering your full potential and designing your prosperous future. This immediately makes you different from most people. Not one person in a hundred even attempts to think beyond his desires. But a thinking person thinks it through to the rule of nature that if you want more, you must be of more service. All around you, successful salesmen are reaping a golden harvest from their ability to deliver more service to their customers. Experience has shown them, as it will show you, that this is the heart of top-notch salesmanship the ability to satisfy the needs and desires of your customers. John D. Rockefeller's rule was, quote, those who serve most profit most. It applies to you too. And to serve most requires some positive action steps. So what I have for you now is 13 action steps in selling. They form a stairway right to the top floor of your company. They are 13 miracle methods. I don't want you to write them down. I don't want you to study them. I don't want you to paste them in your hat nor on your office wall. I want you to live them. Because like most miracles, these miracle methods are based on action. And number one is going to surprise you. You won't see it in most of the textbooks on selling. It's best known only to the successful veteran salesmen. And they don't usually have time to write books. They're writing orders. Here it is. Miracle method number one, enjoy yourself. Look happy, act happy, be happy. Look at any really successful salesman, and what's the first thing you notice? He loves it. He enjoys his freedom, he enjoys his customers, he enjoys the contact with people. His sheer enjoyment of selling is one of his greatest miracle methods. Customers like to give their business to a man who loves what he's doing. Love what you're doing, and be happy. How? Here's how. The first thing you have to do to really enjoy it is understand just who you are. Maybe you've been selling so long that you've forgotten. Yes, as the salesman, you are the heart of your company. In fact, you are the key to this whole free economy. Your production people can produce, that's fine, but they can't create one dollar's worth of profit. They can pile your product up in warehouses and on shipping platforms until it pushes off the roof. They can produce those units six a minute. But until some salesman sells them at the rate of six a minute, the first dollar's worth of profit has not been made. Can the accountants make a profit? No, they only count them. The company lawyers? No, they only protect them. These are overhead departments. The only man who is going to turn a dollar for that company is the salesman. So enjoy your position. It's the key position. The salesman is the shortest line between here and prosperity. He's the one man who makes this whole American thing work. A good salesman comes in all shapes, sizes, and backgrounds. But if he's stuck to the profession successfully for five years, he wears one invariable identifying mark. He walks this earth with the absolute bone-deep, unshakable, fantastic conviction that just around the next corner lies a bonanza. And the miracle of it is that often enough, it does. A good salesman is proud, optimistic, confident. And when he stops being that, he's dead. So project that optimism to the customer. Remember this, for a lot of customers, you're the only ray of light that comes in all day. When you come in, let that aroma of fresh air, vitality, and optimism rub off on everyone in the building. And you'll see the whole place will brighten up. And when you walk out, there'll be a hole in the room. They want to place their order with that fellow who likes what he's doing. Subconsciously, they feel that a little of that excitement of life will rub off on them. Enjoy yourself. Enjoy your customers. Now, you can't put it on and off like a coat. You've got to mean it. It's not hard to do. Because, let's face it, indirectly that man you're looking at across the desk is going to provision your table. How can you be very mad at him? Now, perhaps you're just starting and you say, well, that's true. But you have to have a little success before you can start enjoying it. Granted, all you have to do is think about your first success as your greatest success. Photostat in your mind your first order and frame it. Then frame your largest order. If you have to buy a new frame every week, buy it. 
Line your wall with frames. Keep your successes in front of you. Your failures, forget them. Every great salesman in history has had slack periods. That's part of being a salesman. Remember, don't register failures, register your successes. You'll find success breeds success. Now with that under your belt, here's miracle method number two, and this one can change your life. Plan your time. Plan each day as if you were spending life itself. You are. Spend those days as if each one were worth a thousand dollars a piece. They can be. Do you think you have 365 selling days in your year? You don't. Take out Saturdays, Sundays, holidays, vacations, and meetings at the home office. You're lucky to get 200 selling days. And each of those days, do you think you have an eight-hour selling day? It doesn't even come close to it. Take out driving time, waiting in the reception room time, and those marginal hours when you can't see the customer anyway. Your actual selling day is short. And the great power of this miracle method comes merely in being aware of that. Let your competitor think that he has an eight-hour day if he wants to, and most of them do think that. You're already way ahead of him if you understand that your selling day is short and that you must plan it precisely. Plan it how? Well, that gets into miracle method number three. Keep yourself in the presence of your customers. You're not making a dime when you're driving over the road, when you're sitting in a reception room, or when you're chatting with the gang in the office, when you're doing your paperwork, studying your catalog, your price list, or your new product. Do these things, of course, but during dead time, when you can't see the customers anyway because they're occupied. But during hours when customers are available, Never be anywhere but in the presence of a customer. It's as simple as the law of averages. The more times you come up to bat, the more times you hit. Miracle method number four. It's so simple that I hesitate to mention it, but on the other hand, it's so important. It will save your time and make more sales for you. Miracle method number four. Get that customer's attention before you begin. You can have the most logical and impressive story in the world, but if you begin while he's still thinking of something else, you're not making a single point. That's easy to say, you're thinking, but just how do you do this? I'm not the commanding impressive type. You don't have to be. There are a dozen ways. One of the most natural and effective is to sit up very straight, face him squarely and look him directly in the eye until he's compelled to concentrate his attention on you. And don't begin your strongest points until you have established that visual handshake or an object in your hand which you don't explain until he's so hungry for the information that he gives you full attention. A provocative statement, a question, a challenge about whether he has improved this or that that he mentioned last time. There are dozens of ways, and you know most of them. But my point is this. Don't you begin until you have his attention, even if you have to interrupt and say, excuse me, Ed, but are you listening? Ralph Waldo Emerson said it for all time. He said, the two chief differences among men are, one, the different degrees of attention they are able to command, and two, the unlike expression they give to the same ideas. Don't overlook a little humor to get attention. There's a sign outside Ravenna, Ohio. It says, Welcome to Ravenna, a town of 10,000 friendly people and a couple of soreheads under control. People on the main drag drive through a dozen towns, paying no attention to any of them except Ravenna. An industrial gas heating salesman who holds number one position for new installations sold by his utility sometimes opens saying, Can I come in and gas a while? A very successful air conditioning salesman was being hurt by competition from a firm which was blanketing his area with ads about their extremely liberal credit, very little down and months to pay. To counter this, the defending salesman approached his prospects with a grin and the remark, I have an even better proposal. Everything down, and think of it, nothing a week for the rest of your life. Miracle method number five. Come back, come back, come back. A study, which is now so well known as to be the salesman's Bible, shows that in industrial selling especially, you don't begin to sell until the fourth call. From the fifth, sixth, seventh calls, orders increase a little. On the eighth, ninth, and tenth calls, trust has been established. But do you know what the study also shows? And this is fantastic. So listen hard. 
52% of the salesmen stop after that first call. 23% stop after the second. 11% stop after the third call. Only 13% continue beyond the third call if they've been turned down before. But these are the men who can write their own ticket with any company. And notice how simple. No genius involved, no brilliance. Just come back and back and back. But these men's houses are pointed out and people say a brilliant salesman lives in there. Only the person inside knows the truth. That all he is, is persistent. So on the simple and undifficult merit of merely coming back four times, you're halfway to success. With some product lines, give a customer two calls to merely get to know your name and your product line. A third call to begin to admire your courage and doggedness. A fourth call for him to see that you're steady and awfully hard to turn back. The fifth call may only give you a little sympathy order. But even if it takes ten blank calls, give him ten chances to turn you down. How can he turn you down on the 11th? Have you ever turned down a salesman 11 times? The fact is, people like to be sold. During the post-war seller's market boom, people became irritated by salesmen who didn't need their business and showed it plainly and scornfully. As a result, people love it when somebody really wants their business. Oh, sure, they're striking back a little. They enjoy it now that they can turn you down. But they still like it, and they give you A for effort, and pretty soon, they're going to give you an order. And on this coming back, Maybe you're seeing the wrong man. Edward Green is a star Westinghouse industrial salesman. He sells and sells and sells. Asked how he does it, he answers with a grin, quote, I always get three competitive no's. Miracle method number six, know your customer. Two competing salesmen walk into a customer. One knows the customer's personality, the personality of his company, the needs of his company, how big it is, how many plants it has. The other man has a name on a return inquiry slip. Who's going to get the order? Well, how do you get to know your customer when you've never sold him anything before? That's the fantastic part of it. It's so easy. That's the miracle. The newspaper clipping file at the public library, the city directory, inquiries from your friends, even the receptionist in the customer's own plant, Know your customer. Ask questions. The day of the talkathon salesman is long gone. Listen a little. Ask what they make, what the problems are, what the goals are, the future plans. How much of your product do they use? From whom do they buy it now? What do they pay for it? What's his job? What is he trying to accomplish? He'd rather talk than listen anyhow. Ask questions. It's a miracle method. Miracle method number seven, know your product. Naturally, I'm not going to dwell on that. It's obvious. Yet it's a miracle method. Almost alone, this one miracle method can carry you all by itself. When the personality boys have come and gone, when the golf-playing salesmen have been left behind, when the chips are down, the man who knows his product best writes the business. This one miracle method, knowing your product, is in fact all that some of the best salesmen have to offer. Very often the finest kind of salesmanship is simply knowing more about the product than any other man. This applies especially to very competitive products where the price is the same, the product is the same, the quality is the same. In that case, the only difference is in favor of the man who understands his product best. Miracle method number eight, grooming. Nothing less than your very best. I know it's obvious, but dress your best not for the benefit of your customer, but for yourself. When you dress your best, your own morale will translate into optimism and confidence. Miracle method number nine, be scrupulously honest. It pays and pays. Elementary, yes, but in an age not famous for honesty, people are hungry for it. If you don't know the answer, say so. Don't bluff. If he's using a competitive product which is a good one, say so. You may not pick up an order today, but when the customer gets into a tight spot or an emergency or an area where he's not sure of himself, he'll send for that salesman who impressed him with his honesty. Because when you're in trouble, high-pressured salesmanship you don't need. Honest service you need desperately. John Wanamaker once surprised everybody in the merchandising business. He ran a controversial ad in the New York Times against the advice of his staff. It said, we are stuck with 300 raincoats that aren't worth a darn. I'm going to sell them out for $1.68. By noon the next day, they were all gone. 
Since then, Wanamaker's adopted a permanent policy of aggressive honesty. Miracle method number 10, ask for the order. He doesn't want to force his business on you. He wants to be sold. He loves to be sold. He wants you to ask for that order so that when he gives it to you, he feels he's doing something for you. Miracle method number 11, take a moonshot once a week. One shot at a bigger sale than you've ever tried before. One call on a big new customer that kind of scares you just to think about it. It often takes just as much time and effort and trouble to sell the little customers as the big ones. So you might as well sell the big ones. A young electrical apparatus salesman wound up a bad week on Friday night having a light dinner in the Leland Hotel in Mansfield, Ohio. He was debating whether he could afford an after-dinner cigar when he was offered one by a white-haired salesman at the next table. The old gent said, What's the matter, young fellow? Well, the young salesman explained that he hadn't written an order all week. That's nothing to be alarmed about, son. I sell electrical, too, and I haven't written an order for six months. Well, gosh, said the young man, who do you sell to? The older man offered a match, and he said, governments. As they talked further, he explained, You see, if you're going to hitch up the horse anyway, you might as well plow a whole field instead of just a patch. So if your product is one you usually sell in one or two or three units at a time, sit down with a pencil and dream a little. Where could you sell 10 units at a crack? 20, 30, 100? Take a moonshot once a week. Miracle method number 12 is action. You can study and plot and scheme and plan, but in sales, the rewards are for action. The man in motion is the winner. Half the time, the victory goes to the man who has put himself in the right office at the right time. This takes action. Many a large order has fallen to the man who had no other merit except that he got up at 5.30 in the morning and drove a hundred miles to be on the doorstep when the customer's office opened, where he knew there would be a necessity for his product. Sit behind your desk and wait for the customers to call. It will suddenly seem as if they've all gone on vacation. But move into action, even if it's just a routine follow-up on your least customer. Suddenly, a dozen other opportunities present themselves. I know the doctors say slow down. However, that's for other types of business, not selling. Selling is healthy. But anyway, what are you saving yourself for? This is it. Life is now. And the difference between living and existing is action. And miracle method number 13, don't be superstitious. Walk under the ladder, then climb it. Make Friday the 13th your best-selling day. Let every obstacle become a challenging game as you strive to improve yourself. Never close your own door. Make calls and make sales. Now, these 13 methods might seem a formidable bill of particulars to worry about. It's not. What you have to remember is this. Superiority is less than 5%. The Yanks don't usually win by 10 runs. They usually win by one run, two runs. The national golf champion usually wins by one stroke or two. The winning salesman is usually not some superhuman powerhouse. His superiority is less than 5%. The winning salesman enjoys himself just a little more, thinks a little more, projects just a little more optimism, plans his time a little more carefully, knows his product just a little better, sees a few more customers, comes back one or two more times than the average salesman, is just a little bit more honest, tries one or two more long shots or moon shots than the average man, but he's only a little bit better in every department. Don't watch the top notcher. Be one. Don't meet the competition. Make it. Use these miracle methods for your own benefit, for the benefit of others. You can and will employ them as you methodically plan your sales career. Your miracle methods will guide you in every major move you make. You want to sell. You can sell. You will sell. This is the way up. Are you coming?